Today in the crypto space, we see the market going sideways, Bitcoin hovering around that $28,000 level and Ethereum still hovering around that $1,800 mark. The rest of the crypto space are pretty much a mix of green and red with some good gainers like Doge, Polkadot, Aptos, and many, many more. In today's video, I want to look at the general market. I want to look at Bitcoin as a leading indicator, but more importantly, I want to talk about Ethereum. I think ETH right now is a great scenario to think about buying the dip and dollar cost averaging. So you know what? Let's talk about the news. Let's analyze the charts and let's strategize to capitalize. Welcome to the channel. My name is Mike and let's get right into it guys. If you're new to the channel special welcome on the channel. We talk about cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and we look through all the altcoin market to find opportunities whether we go up or down bearish or bullish it doesn't matter we want to prepare for that volatility so we can make some of those gains and if you appreciate that strategy subscribe to the channel click the bell so you don't miss out on any of my future videos of course guys you can follow me along there on all those socials the link are in this description below and better yet join me live at 7 30 eastern where we talk about crypto news and price action guys Right now, we see Bitcoin still going sideways. Unfortunately, not much volume, not much momentum, not much indication of whether we're going to be going up or down. However, for me, there is a slight bias to the downside. Just a slight bias. Right now, I feel a little bit of a coin toss scenario, and but I still feel a bias to the downside. Okay, we'll talk about my biases. We'll talk about my overall analysis and how I came up with this bias because at the end of the day, it's all about statistical probability based on a... Um, a strategy now if you have a strategy that's giving you a bias guys stick with your gun stick with the rules if it's a proven win strategy stick with your rules don't fomo don't get emotions involved right now because a lot of people are looking at this market and looking like they're getting bored and then this is where they start making really you know uncalculated moves and you want to calculate everything you want to be able to make sure that your risk to reward is healthy and right now as we see bitcoin i think is on the risky side of things in the sense that it already did a lot it already moved a lot we're going to about the bitcoin chart very very soon then we'll talk about ethereum and see what's happening there and you can see that bitcoin and ethereum are the heavyweights of the market and ethereum currently is pretty much following bitcoin's pattern pattern of of price action however i still feel like ethereum could still have a nice run up when we do and if we do get an altcoin season nobody knows for sure what is going to be happening so be careful who you listen to on here on social media on online on youtube but at the end of the day if someone's telling you you know to think critically about this scenario and uh, using these parameters guys it's just about probability that's all it is no one knows for certain right so right now let's continue looking th through the market and see if we can get a, an edge on any of these alts any opportunities we see that doge right now is probably the only anomaly that is showing real strength here in the last 24 hours now i'm wondering if elon said something or what's going on here but at the end of the day we see doge getting a little bit of a bounce nine percent in the last seven days five in the last 24 hours looking good the rest of the altcoins above it are pretty much stagnant not doing much not interested not interesting no volume even cardano i have a feeling that is even a bearish divergence developing there on those to two tops on cardano so um i'm a little bit skeptical now this evening we're going to go live at 7 30 we're going to talk about a lot of these alts that you know we kind of uh, notice here uh, but if you have any other coins that you want me to cover here on the channel let me know in the comment section below and i'll definitely include them in my videos uh let's write this down i want to talk about ada ADA tonight, 7.30, we'll talk about ADA, we'll look at the ADA chart, Dogecoin is interesting, of course, getting that nice little pump to the upside, but Polkadot, um, rallying up still, doing pretty good, higher highs, higher highs, higher lows, but eventually, the party must end, and usually when we break a trend, I can see a clear trend just on the short term, a short term chart here, a clear trend to the upside, now if we break that trend, and we're getting bearish divergence on those two tops at the end, and maybe a triple divergence on those three tops, maybe we could be coming down very soon on Monday with some good volatility here, so DOT is something to pay attention to, because I can see some good scenarios there, litecoin looking for another breakout perhaps i think litecoin did well so i'm not really interested plus i'm not a i'm not really you know keen on litecoin anyway so um not that i'm negative about it it's just uh, you know it's not my thing it's not for everybody uh I, it's hard to get involved in all the projects right avalanche getting a little bit of a, a bounce only four percent but very choppy very choppy uh what else do we see here anything else that is interesting chain link maybe getting a little bit of a reversal in the short term it could be possible Toncoin a rally bart simpson 
Egyptian style to the downside. Uh, stellar, really looking good, very similar to Cardano in a sense, or even uh, Polkadot. It's been doing well, slow grind to the upside, up 20% in the last seven days. This could be a token to potentially take some profits on, especially if you hit some critical levels of resistance with bearish divergence. We could be getting some follow through price action very, very soon. So make sure you take those profits nice and slowly, de risk at. at, at especially if you're some in some really good gains you definitely want to start de-risking um, what else do we see here aptos getting a nice pump to the upside 10 percent in the last 24 hours really really bullish i think aptos is one of those tokens that definitely retraced quite a bit lately and maybe it's due for some relief to the upside. Maybe it might move first than all, all of the altcoins. We don't know because it did get a lot of liquidity early on and it did retrace significantly really early on. So maybe this is something to pay attention to. If we see Bitcoin dip and we see the market kind of take a bit of a breather, Aptos will definitely take a dip and then we'll get a second chance to perhaps scale in further on Aptos. Okay, that's looking good. Hedera hash graph, very, very bullish right now. Look at that nice rally to the upside, 21% to the upside in the last seven days. We talk about uh, Hedera Hash Graph H bar, and we talked about it a day ago, and we anticipated a little bit more to the upside. We anticipated a little bit more to the upside, and I think that we're almost there at those critical levels of resistance. Bearish divergence could be in play. I want to take a look at H bar. H bar is another one. I like the community the most. H bar is great. Obviously, fundamentals are decent. There's a couple of gaps in the fundamentals, but nonetheless, it's pumping so we want to ride with it we want to ride with it we're not going to go against the trend we're not going to go against the sentiment we're not going against the market we're going to go with the market and ride the momentum to the upside now if you were able to scale in early i would definitely consider taking some off the table on any of these tokens if you see good pumps to the upside upwards of 10 percent in a week 15 percent in a week start taking a little bit of gains that's my um that's my strategy that's what i do and i put my money where my mouth is and i essentially take profits as soon as i can the market tends to want to take them back so be careful with that your protocol getting a little bit of a consolidation at the top of the range looking like a, an ascending triangle type of wedge scenario now we could break down we continue we could continue or break to the upside New York protocol looking really interesting for a potential rally up or even a pullback especially if we're getting class b bearish divergence on these two tops something to be aware of with near protocol however i still think that near protocol is undervalued and it's a good time to dollar cost average at all the dips v chain again very similar to near protocol as you can see the price action is very hesitant there at the top of the range we could break out or we could take a dip um arbitrum took a little bit of a dip just recently it's down seven percent it rallied up pretty good to I think about a dollar forty or so now we're dipping we're dipping to a dollar 24 could be be the second opportunity to buy the dip you see this arbitrum is range bound however i think that it's back testing the breakout because it did break out just slightly now it's back testing. this is how you build confidence you back test previous breakouts you you collect some more bullish momentum you collect some more buy orders bullish sentiment and then you continue for another leg up as the market gets comfortable with this upwards trend if it is going to start creating a nice strong upwards trend you're going to see some good springs to the upside and hopefully Hopefully you'll have some bags packed. So I'm accumulating right around, I would say now I'm going to bring it down a little bit to about $1.15, maybe at about a dollar, a dollar twenty. I wouldn't mind dabbling in. And of course, if you have no skin in the game and you want to get a little bag, right now is not bad. And I just buy in slowly, dollar cost average. We're down seven and a half percent, give or take. It's not a bad time to start scaling in on some of these tokens, especially if they're bullish ones. Algorand sideways we'll have our chance we'll have our chance it's it definitely rallied five and a half percent in the week not enough to consider uh profit taking just yet maybe still in the stance of buying the dips on algo uh decentraland waking up just a bit that's looking good stacks with that retracement at the bottom of the range still looking at maybe scaling in a little bit more but you know that if the overall market dips because of bitcoin uh we're gonna see some good fire sales so that's what i'm holding off on i keep always keep dry powder ready and i always calculate what i really need to be able to buy the dips on all the tokens that i'm interested in at low at the very extreme low levels especially if we get an, an event where i can get a good fire sale i'm i'm preparing for it it's i'm not going to ignore it i'm not going to pretend like it can't happen 
because he could. Even if it's a 10% chance that he comes down there, I want to be prepared for that 10%. It's the 10% of the market that's going to do the right thing and buy the dip at that lower level. And those are the 10% that are usually in profits. So that's why I want to be that uh, that small 10% of individuals in the market that buy the dip at extreme lows if we happen to dip. And I want to make sure that I have that capital to do that. Look at Caspa. What is this token flying to the sky 152% in the last seven days? Guys, I'm not buying into this pump of course you know my strategy let this thing come down and then we'll buy dips at good levels if you weren't able to get in early guys that's the way it is it's the name of the game if you buy now this thing can dump right on your face and then you're going to be holding the bag for the rest of the market you'll be exit liquidity that's the that's the way it works uh gmx sideways planking maybe a bart simpson style dip to the downside no worries i'm happy i'm ready for that Frax, 12% looking good. Maybe another little scenario where we can get a pullback there. If it does happen, let's be prepared. Zilliqa, looking promising. Very good pump, 16% in seven days, 6% in the last 24 hours. Um, you know, this is the thing with Zill. Zill is very volatile. You can get some really quick moves to the upside and quick dips to the downside. And if you made any good profits, maybe skim off the top just in case. I would still be looking for dollar cost, cost average scenarios with Zillica. That's my opinion. Now, if you're over leveraged or you're overexposed with a, a huge bag, you know, and you made some good gains, de-risk. De-risk little by little. I know 16% is not the, the most, but it is still a good rally to the upside. So de-risk between 15 to 20 percent i start to think about de-risking um what else uh, render render looking great up 12 percent in the last seven days i'm still good because i did sell at a dollar 52 and i want to buy my bag back at a dollar 05 i'm patient i'm patient we dipped a three percent in the last 24 hours which okay i'm okay with i still feel like we can come down to lower levels after this abc correction which i think we're in here on render and many other tokens for that matter i feel like we can get another leg down maybe another five wave to the downside give, testing those lower lows testing that liquidity 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 at lower levels and that way we can buy the dips at a fire sale that's what i'm really looking at now if it doesn't happen it's okay i still have a bag i still got a good amount of render uh it took a great amount of profits that i used to buy the dips on other tokens and no harm done taking profits for sure mass network taking a bit of a dip seven 3.7 uh, to the downside looking good for those people that are been talking about mask because it kind of did pick up on popularity just lately based on that rally that it had you know it, th think about a, a dip as an opportunity to get in without as much risk as buying the top okay guys look the market overall uh sideways a lot of sideways a few little rallies here and there um a few little pumps looking good some of them are far out of our reach like caspa some going sideways but overall you know this is it sideways looking a little bit maybe slumpy with bearish divergence we'll take a look at bitcoin first and then we'll jump into the charts. Guys, I know you're here to talk about Bitcoin. Guys, if I've offered you any value in this video, do the channel a huge favor. Slap the like button. As a new channel, the support is greatly appreciated. And of course, you can follow me on all those socials. The links are in the description. But better yet, join me live at 7.30 Eastern where we talk about crypto news and price action. Bitcoin right now still within that range, of course. Looking little, little bit, you know, choppy, sideways. Not much volume happening. Look at the volume. It's definitely pulling down. Squeezing. We, we can expect expect that the Bollinger Bands are definitely squeezing together. Let's look at the Bollinger Bands. I think I have them right here, just quick. Look at that. We're getting to a point where they're squeezing up here within this range. And I feel like that could be uh, something that we need to pay attention to. Now we are testing the top of this trend line that we've kind of extended from down to these from these lower levels and we're going sideways now if you look at the momentum oscillators you can see that we're in chop zone here on the four hour let's kind of tidy this up let's get in the daily quick you can see even on the on the daily this bearish divergence is still intact and we finally got that red histogram bar with this ema cross to the downside finally finally guys we've been patient waiting 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 the conviction is there for me i'm still in that bearish scenario I still feel like we're going to come down to lower levels and I want to be prepared for that. Okay. And I don't want to be the exit liquidity for anybody's trades. And this could be a distribution scenario, very double top ish with bearish divergence stemming from all the way here on the larger time frames. And there is still bearish divergence here on this small cluster of supply and demand or price action right here. So for me, this critical level of his resistance was the perfect time to take profits and de risk because we don't know what's going to happen. And you can see that the probability was that we were going to roll over now it's still you know possible that we 
get a bounce and continue up. Nothing is guaranteed here in, in trading, nothing. But statistically speaking, it looks like we're trying to come down to lower levels here on Bitcoin. We do have a gap here in the volume, which is a weak spot in this chart, which I feel like if we keep on, if we do break below, uh, we can hit about uh, $25,000 and then I would be considering a buy the dip opportunity. And then if we keep on, you know, going down to lower levels guys we do have some lower price targets that could act as some support where i would be dollar cost averaging once again these green arrows i've already filled these two and i took profits on those two up here so i wouldn't mind back buying back on these two again just right about here just in case because we can see that we do have a potential trend line here one touch two touch could we get a third touch very possible this one you know what i'm going to probably ignore that one because this one right here is probably a lot more important and then we start to deal with the gaps the gaps that we still have here in the chart the weak spots now this one right here we can upgrade it a little bit because we kind of filled you know what let me leave it like that and just ignore some of this other price action for a second let's see yeah, we do have a little bit of a gap here. You can see that gap and then a bigger gap right here. And to, to be honest, this is a weak zone all the way down to about 17,400. And I would consider maybe a little bit of a stop at about 19,000 or so. So 20,000 is very possible still because we have this pre previous bottom. This is why I had those two arrows here. But I would look at this zone right here, this box, this red box as a potential between this yellow line and this bottom yellow area as a potential by the dip. And anywhere within this gap, look at the gap. Gap is pretty big. That means that if we break below about 19,000, we could definitely snap, snap right down to about 17,500. For me, that would be an opportunity to buy the dip heavy here on Bitcoin. Now, let's get into the four hour quick, and I'm going to show you a really important thing here on the shorter term time frames, which could kind of lead us to believe that we're coming down, right? We're in a double top scenario with bearish divergence. Some might argue that this is upward sloping, that's still bearish divergence, which is the difference between class A and class B, whichever. It looks more more class a -ish because if you ignore the wicks we are upward sloping but nonetheless it's still bearish divergence guys the rsi is coming down while this price action is going upwards or going sideways whichever way you want to look at it now if we break below about twenty six thousand six hundred and sixty seven, i think that's going to be the neckline or the last level of support before we come down to about twenty five thousand. And for me, I would be buying the dip there. And you can see a perfect M pattern. Break of neckline means we're coming down. However, we do have some EMAs here, the 200 EMA here on the four hour. But on the daily, where's the 200? That one is a lot more important, which we could see is a lot at a lot lower levels. So be careful here because at the end of the day, I'm feeling that we could be coming down. That's my conviction. We see that the MACD is in that bear stance once again with those red histogram bars facing down. It looks like the bears are trying to get that impulse. Now, as the Asia markets wake up, as the Asia market come in here and as you know the western world obviously gets into the market on monday and so on we are going to see some volatility prepared for monday now let's talk about ethereum ethereum is a heavyweight in this market we know that it's the biggest altcoin it's it's probably not even considered an altcoin by many which is totally fine but at the end of the day we have to understand that ethereum has a really good thing going for it which is you get some risk but not as risky as some of those other altcoins it's the blue chips of all blue chips and this means that if you're willing to take Take a bit of risk and still have some stability and you want some volatility ethereum's the right place to go plus it's got great fundamentals of course but it's the right place to go would i be buying the dip right now or would i be you know packing a bag at the current moment guys it's looking very similar to bitcoin we see a bearish divergence Price action is going sideways, so it is definitely a class B bearish divergence while the RSI is coming down here on the 4-hour. You can see that RSI on the 4-hour coming down fine, and price action is going up. Very hesitant, very showing a lot of weakness here at this level that it's going to hold. It's basically going to get rejected. So far, no volume. Volume is contracting. It looks like we could be coming down. Let's look at the EMAs here on the MACD. EMAs coming down facing down histogram bars are in the red facing down as well so from a ethereum short-term perspective i still feel like we could come down to lower levels maybe hit if we break below 1730 it, we're coming down to about 1500 but we do have some supply and demand here to act as support so we do have to be careful here with eth because what 
it is is that it's at a a little bit of a lower level than Bitcoin. Bitcoin is way a, a lot higher than than ETH. ETH, relatively speaking, to the actual chart, could be Bitcoin could be in and around this level based on the chart, or even this level where ETH has a little bit more room to run up. Right. And the volatility will be a lot less if, if Bitcoin takes a dip, I believe, because we do have a lot of supply and demand right here to potentially slow or halt the dip. Right. But if we get down to about fifteen hundred, we get into a weak zone. And this weak zone means that the price action can fall to about thirteen forty five. But look at this, what we have looking left. We have a lot of price action here to act as support. So this is what I'm feeling. I'm feeling it's a, if Bitcoin dips and the market happens, take a, take a little bit of a dip. ETH could come down to about uh, seventeen thirty or so test this zone for support it most likely would fall below and the next area to buy the dip for me is at about fifteen hundred dollars if we break below that i'm going to buy the dip again at about 1350 we could wick down test some liquidity and i couldn't even scatter a few buy orders in here and going heavier as we come down to about 1350 because i believe that if all, uh, if the market kind of takes a dip in the short term eth would be on a great sale right at this trend line which is very confluent to add about 1350 you can see that we respected this trend line once twice three times and we're probably going to come down if we do come down to test this as a higher low if we get a higher low out of here no problem we'll come down by the dip it's still very bullish because we're in an upwards trend we'll pick up some more bulls dollar cost average and we'll rally right back up to the upside and take some of those profits at higher levels guys eth is looking really good not on the daily um it's a very similar scenario where with bitcoin you can see that we are critical levels of resistance now we could get even more critical getting to these zones would be an absolute scenario where we could take some profit and for sure expect but look at the volume gap a huge gap right after this area we have a very little supply and demand to act as resistance going forward okay we the gap actually the volume actually indents quite a bit and tapers off not to say that we can't get rejected over here i'm just saying we have a huge huge level of support here for future price action if we were to come down and that gap as you as i mentioned is there look at the gap in comparison to the rest of the chart this is a weak spot in this in this in this chart and if we get here to test this zone this is where we're going to see a true weak spot and the bears could take advantage of this weak spot bringing the price down to about 1350 now if we break above the bulls will have a um an easier time bringing this up because of the lack of supply and demand particularly in this little cluster right here you can see kind of indents just a bit so i feel like a short-term weakness would be this zone until we get to a little bit more choppy area in fact i'm going to be a little bit more conservative with this this box because i feel like i was a little bit and, and yeah this this is the zone okay try to be front running i don't want to be i want to be modest because at the end of the day if you overshoot you won't take any profits and that's unfortunate if you're able to buy the dip here at the bottom of the range we got one maybe even two buy orders in here we're definitely in the profits we're in some gains okay so short term i'm expecting a bit of a pullback long long term on the daily or longer term i'm expecting a continuation up and we need to kind of dip down and get this bearish divergence kind of reset and, and the oscillators reset so that we have some more confidence to continue going up from a position of strength nice and low so that we can go and sell nice and high guys if you appreciate what we did here on this video do the channel a huge favor slap the like button follow me on all those social and better yet join me live at 7 30 eastern where we talk about crypto news and price action take care guys have a good one and don't forget buy the dip